Valves and transistors were essential to Pi's products. This video explains how they work. A valve, also known as a tube in the USA, is an electronic device that controls the flow of electric current between electrodes. They are used to detect and amplify, that is, make larger, an electrical signal such as a radio signal. This picture shows a typical valve consisting of a glass tube enclosing a vacuum, the electrodes within the glass tube, and the pins that are used to connect the circuit that uses the valve. A valve consists of a glass container from which the air has been evacuated so that it contains a vacuum. This diagram is a simplified picture of how a valve is constructed. There are two metal plates inside the glass tube connected to the outside. These are called the anode and the cathode. A filament wire, similar to that in a light bulb, is fitted close to the cathode and this is called the heater. If a voltage is applied to the heater, a current flows through it and it heats up. This then heats up the cathode until it is red hot. When the cathode is red hot, then electrons in the metal gain energy and are emitted from the cathode into the vacuum in a region just above the cathode. This process is called thermionic emission. Electrons are subatomic particles and are far too small to be seen in practice, but are represented in the diagram by red dots. The electrons remain in the vicinity of the cathode, and if the heater is turned off, they return to the cathode. Electrons are negatively charged and are attracted to a conductor that is positively charged. If you connect a voltage source, for example a battery, via a resistor to limit the current, with its positive connection to the anode and its negative connection to the cathode, then the electrons will flow through the vacuum to the anode. They will continue to flow through the wires and the voltage source as long as the cathode remains heated. However, if the voltage applied to the anode and cathode is reversed so that the anode is connected to negative and the cathode is positive, then the electrons will be attracted back to the cathode and no current flows through the valve. Such a valve is called a diode. Diodes are used in radios where they are needed to only allow current to flow in one direction. For example, to detect radio signals or to convert alternating current AC to direct current DC. These diodes are also called rectifiers. In a triode, a third electrode called a grid is positioned between the anode and the cathode. This electrode has holes in it so that electrons can pass through. A triode is operated with a positive voltage between the anode and the cathode. If a small positive voltage, Vg, is applied to the grid with respect to the cathode, then the electrons will pass through the grid as they move between the cathode and the anode. If a negative voltage, Vg, is applied to the grid with respect to the cathode, then the electrons will be repelled from the grid and will be unable to pass to the anode. So the grid can be used to turn the valve on and off. In addition, small changes to the voltage on the grid will allow varying amounts of electrons to pass from the cathode to the anode, depending upon the amount of voltage applied. In this way, a small change in the grid voltage can cause a relatively large change in the current passing between the anode and the cathode. Thus, a small AC signal applied to the grid produces an amplified signal at the anode. The preceding diagrams have been a simplified explanation of how a valve operates. The physical structure is usually similar to the cutaway diagram shown here, where the heated cathode is in the form of a cylinder. The grid is another cylinder surrounding the cathode, and finally the anode is another cylinder surrounding the other electrodes. There are many types of valve. Additional grids can be added to provide different characteristics for other applications. So, for example, a pentode has five electrodes, anode, cathode, and three grids. 
you will see a number of different types of valve in the equipment displayed in the exhibition. A transistor is a device used to amplify or switch electronic signals and electrical power. It is composed of semiconductor material, usually with three terminals for connection to an external circuit. Transistors have largely replaced valves because they do not need a heater which reduces their power consumption and eliminates the delay when valve heaters warm up. They are very small in size and weight. Large numbers of extremely small transistors can be manufactured as a single integrated circuit. Low operating voltages mean they can operate with small batteries and they are much more rugged than valves. How does a transistor work? Well, there are many different types of transistor. What follows is a much simplified explanation of how one type of transistor, the bipolar junction transistor, works. Transistors are generally made of silicon, although the first transistors, including those made by Pi, were made of germanium. Silicon and germanium are elements and are known as semiconductors. This means that they have an electrical resistance which is more than a metal, such as copper, and less than an insulator, such as glass. The way that transistors work is a bit more complicated than valves, so what follows is a very much simplified explanation. If we treat a semiconductor such as silicon by adding small amounts of some other elements, a process known as doping, we can make it behave in a different way. If the silicon is doped with certain elements, then electrons can flow out of it more easily. Silicon treated this way is called n-type, or negative type, because electrons have a negative charge. We can also dope silicon with other elements so that electrons in nearby materials will tend to flow into it. This type of silicon is called p-type, or positive type. Before we describe the transistor, there's another important semiconductor device we need to describe called the diode. If you join a piece of n-type silicon to a piece of p-type silicon and put electrical contacts on either side, the junction between the two materials has a useful property. If we connect a voltage source, for example a battery, or a resistor to the two contacts, then electrons can flow through the junction from the n-type side to the p-type side through the circuit. This happens because the electrons more easily flow out of the n-type side of the junction and more easily flow into the p-type side. Electrons are subatomic particles and are far too small to be seen in practice, but are represented in the diagram by red dots. However, if we reverse the polarity of the voltage source, then the electrons won't flow across the junction. This diode can be used in the same applications as the valve diode described earlier, such as rectifiers and radios, where they only allow current to flow in one direction. If we sandwich a thin piece of p-type silicon between two pieces of n-type silicon, we can create a transistor. This particular type is called an NPN transistor. If we join electrical contacts to all three layers of the sandwich, we can make a component that will either amplify a current or switch it on or off. The two pieces of n-type silicon are called the emitter and the collector. The p-type silicon between them is called the base. If we connect a voltage source, VCE, such as a battery, with the positive terminal connected to the collector and the negative to the emitter, then no current will flow. If we connect another small voltage source, VBE, with the positive terminal connected to the base and the negative to the emitter, then a small current will flow between the base and the emitter. This causes a much larger current flow between the emitter and the collector. By turning the base voltage off, the transistor turns off and no current flows. Therefore, by turning the base current on and off, the transistor becomes a switch. If we superimpose a time-varying signal on the DC voltage on the base of the transistor, then this will cause a much larger variation in the current through the collector and the base. By doing this, the transistor becomes an amplifier. The actual transistor is very small, so it's installed in a package for ease of fitting into an electronic circuit. 
The enlarged cutaway picture shows the transistor in its package and the internal connections to the pins on the package. This is a packaged germanium transistor made by Newmarket Transistors, a pie company, in about 1956. This type was used in the first British transistor radio and examples can be seen in the museum. There are now many types of transistor. They come in all shapes and sizes, high power, low power, high frequency, bipolar, NPN and PNP, field effect transistors and many other types. Transistors are used in virtually all electronic products including computers, radios, mobile phones etc. They can now be made extremely small and integrated circuits can contain billions of transistors. The average smartphone contains 460 billion transistors. Compare that number with the first Pi transistor radio in 1956 which had just six transistors. To learn more about the valves and transistors that Pi used in their products, please visit Cambridge Museum of Technology.